I do can hear you now. And uh, welcome to the um, holiday hors d'oeuvre um, cooking class. Kevin uh, come in, is assisting me tonight. Kevin is um, my executive sous chef. So um, we have quite an extensive program today. Uh, we do videotape it. So if you want to go later on back and uh, look it over some segments, uh, I think that will help if you cook some of the dishes later on. As well, we have recipes posted. As well, there's ingredients on the marketplace where you can get uh, to cook some of the items. For the cooking uh, uh, segment, I will take my mask off because I think it's going to be easier to, for me to understand me. So, let me... Um, Let me get ready here. So the menu what we have here today, what we're going to do is um, we're going to start off with the uh, curry base uh, for the eggs. So some of you most probably wondering why we're making a curry sauce for deviled eggs. Um, the reason why I'm doing that is um, I always find then when you get uh, curry powder out of the can, it gives you a very harsh not very refined flavor. So by cooking a, a sauce, uh, smoothens it all up. And um, the, the key is that you're really reducing it to somewhat of a paste. And um, what we're using on here today is a madras curry powder. We're going to have ground masala. We have some onions, some garlic, tomato paste, little chicken stock, if you want to make it vegan, you can just take water or vegetable stock. So this is something I'm going to start off first because it needs to be chilled down before I'm going to start with the deviled eggs. Next, I will go into the artichoke spinach dip. And as we're going to um, cook the items, I will start some of it and then I'll give it over to Kevin and he will continue it and then we'll bring it all together. But basically the artichoke dip is a bechamel. We, we, we're cooking the spinach. I'm sauteing the spinach on this particular recipe, uh, but you also can take frozen spinach out of the uh, grocery store, defrost it, uh, press out all the water, and then use the aromatics like the onions or whatever and sauteing it off. Uh, bechamel, then we put the cheeses, we mix it all together and we bake it in the oven. Next, we will go to the marguez uh, sausage stuffed uh, mushrooms. Uh, marguez is a it's a, almost like a lamb meatball. Uh, the heat you can adjust by how much harissa you actually want to put in there. That's almost like a chili paste. Uh, we're stuffing the mushrooms then and we're going to bake it in the oven. Next, we're going to do petite crab cakes. Um, this is not exactly the same crab cakes which we're having here at the, uh, at the club uh, because here at the club, the crab cakes have absolutely no, no bread or or gluten in there. This does have some um, uh, Melba toast in there. We bind it a little bit together. And with that, we're doing a smoked tomato aioli. Aioli is almost like a, a sense of a mayonnaise. Uh, by smoking the tomatoes, incorporating them, uh, gives it a little bit um, a better taste and makes it more interesting. But again, you can serve sata sauce with it, remoulade sauce with it, whatever you're, 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 you like with it. Chicken piccata skewers, I figured by putting that menu together, I mean, chicken piccata is such a hit here at the club. I said, why not do it for an hors d'oeuvre? And it's almost like a little bit like a lollipop where we're going to take the chicken, slightly pound it out, season it, dip it in an egg, wa uh, egg, egg wash, it's basically eggs with a little bit of water, Parmesan cheese. So first we put in a flour, then we put in an egg wash, and then we start paying it out and serving a lemon butter sauce with it. Next, uh, we're going to the uh, baked brie. Uh, it's basically a brie cheese. It has some jam in there, some nuts. We are wrapping it in the buff pastry and baking it. It's always a great dish to have when you have hors d'oeuvres, uh, great to share. Uh, it stays hot because the buff pastry keeps all the, all the heat in there. Uh, then we're going to the uh, artichoke caponata. Um, uh, basically, it has some eggplant in there, and when you read the, egg, uh, the recipe, in the recipe, I say uh, fried eggplant. So 
you dice the eggplants and you fry them in a little bit of oil. It's not necessary that you have to salt them and sit them uh, and then press out all the liquid so you can fry them and then we fold it in. Candied uh, apple smoked bacon, that's just where we're using our thick sliced bacon, a little bit of uh, sherry vinegar and sugar, and then we're canning it, so it becomes almost like uh, crispy, and it's a great way also to eat uh, bacon. And then we're going to the uh, deviled eggs. I will show the uh, base recipe on the deviled eggs. Now keep in mind, uh, the curried eggs, the um, uh, pimento eggs, you're adding some more liquid in there. So when you make the base on the, on the deviled egg, you wanna keep it really firm. And, and my recipe, what I sent to you, it's not just mayonnaise, what is in there, there's also butter in there. And the butter actually helps it then to hold it a little bit together. So when the egg's being done, you put them in the refrigerator, it gets a little bit more, more body, more texture. And last but not least, we're going to make the smoked salmon roulade. And what we're doing there is we take some green cheese and usually all what you serve with the smoked salmon, which is your, tomato, which is your red onions, your capers, uh, your cornichons, we're putting in the cream cheese then set the salmon on top, flip it over, rolling it up and serving it on a cucumber cup. Um, so before I'm starting, is there any questions? Can you all hear me? I cannot hear them. We can hear you. Okay, all right, okay, wonderful. Chef, Chef this is Greg, how are you? Okay, very good, very good. I'd so, be curious, um, when you get to it, it sounds like you will, I, to see your favorite way to chop onions. Okay, I will do that. Uh, I have already some chopped, so I'm using the olive oil. Actually, it's available also on the marketplace. It's our uh, private label, what we have here at the club, and it comes from Provence, France. I put some oil in the pan. I put the onions in there. So I pay it slightly until it's translucent. So translucent means not any color on the onions. You want to saute them, get some of the uh, moisture out, a little bit more oil. And the reason why I'm doing that and not adding the uh, onions and the garlic at the same time, because the garlic will cook much faster. And by the time the onions being done, your garlic is burned. And you definitely don't want to have burned garlic in that sauce that makes it bitter. All right, now my, my onions are being cooked already translucent. Now I'm going to put in there my garlic and sauteing it. And again, it takes, I think, in the recipe, one to two minutes. Um, that, again, depends on what oven you have. If you have an induction stove, it will cook much faster than uh, the uh, propane burner, what I have here. But you can tell by how the onions being done is, we're calling it in culinary terms until the aroma develops. So it gives this slight little nutty flavor when you, when you smell the garlic. So as you can see, there's no color to it. Okay, now the key part on that is we're adding the uh, curry powder and the garam masala. And here you wanna turn down your oven a little bit because you don't again wanna turn that. But what you're doing right now, you're roasting the herbs and that develops the flavor and as you're uh, remember in the beginning, I told you that just taking curry powder out of the um, out of the package makes it a really rough, not very well balanced flavor. By roasting them with the with the onions and the garlic, you don't develop the flavor. We're putting a little bit of tomato paste in there. and uh, keep cooking it until the tomato paste has been spread throughout the whole mixture here. And now I'm deglazing it with some chicken stock. So 
So this here now, you put on a um, medium flame and you keep cooking it to be saying the sauce consistency. So Kevin will take that and we will do, so you can use that right here. And we're going to make a sauce consistency. You got the um, spinach artichoke. So uh, any questions on that? Very simple. Now, if you want to give it a little bit of a kick, you can put some sambal in there. You can put in some uh, sriracha. Uh, again, it's a great way uh, to cook it right in with your curry base rather than just using it raw. Next thing we're going to do, and actually take a larger pan here. Okay, we're going to do the um, spinach artichoke tip. Any questions so far on the curry base? Okay, spinach artichoke tip. I have garlic, I have shallots, I have garlic. I have fennel, I have spinach. And this is where we're going to pay off the spinach with, with all the uh, uh, onions and uh, fennel and garlic, which gives you additional flavor. So if you wanna skip that, you could take frozen spinach and add that in, it will cook a little bit faster. Then I have chopped roasted artichokes. Um, the bechamel, where's the, the flour on that? Huh? I need the flour. Okay, then I have salt pepper. So we are going to start with the uh, oil again. I'm putting my shallots in there. Keep cooking those. Not putting, putting in there the garlic yet. This oven actually has done some white wine, right? I have here my sambal, and then we're going to make a little bit of a bechamel. So that's basically your butter, your flour, where you're going to make the roux, and then we're adding in some milk. So now I'm putting in there the um, fennel. Keep it sauteing. If it's too dry, like this one here, put a little bit more oil. Okay, and now I'm adding the garlic, just a little bit. And you got the milk, warm, huh? Yeah, for the bechamel, what's the recipe? Okay, and now we're putting the, um, the spinach in there. As you can see, I have a, a, a large pot and the, you can take a, a large saute pan too, but I find it easier to use my uh, my large pot to saute the spinach so not everything flies all over the place. Keep tossing it. A little salt and pepper. All right, and now we're going to cook that down. I do put a little bit of white wine in there, dry white wine, not necessarily sweet white wine. Maybe about two tablespoons is fine. 
helps the will say the spinach and as well heat some cooking. So as you can see the little spinach water head has been cooking down quite a lot. All right. So we're putting this on, this on here. I have here my milk and my bechamel. All right. So for my, for my bechamel, I dig butter. Keep that, uh, get that melting. Bechamel is basically a room. You put your milk in there, you cook it. After that, uh, it's cooked, has the right consistency. We then mix it together with the spinach, with the artichokes, with the sambal, then folding in some of the cheeses and then uh, put it in a casserole dish, bake it and, and put a little bit of um, Parmesan cheese on top. Any questions, anybody? Everybody's quiet. Looking good. <laughs> Busy cooking. Yeah. I actually, uh, it was funny yesterday, I was looking at um, a channel and uh, I think it was chopped. And the person there was doing a roux and I think twice the roux broke on him. I think you don't have enough flour here, Kevin. Chef Fritz, you're about three times faster tablespoon. than the average cook. I try, I, I had a few years under my belt, put it that way. Okay, now I put the flour in there. Just a little bit more. Thank you very much. So, you know, and I was looking at uh, on, on, on the television and he kept breaking, breaking the roux. And I said, why he doesn't put more flour in there? And he kept putting more butter in there. So the more that he put in there more fat, the more it started to break. And you want to do a, bro a blonde roux, okay? So I'm not sure if you can see that, but basically that's just what you want, a blonde roux. If I would do if I would do gumbo, I would make a uh, a dark roux because that's basically a little small. All right, so we have a little bit of the warm milk. You add that now to the roux. Uh, meanwhile, the spinach is ready. You chilled it down and then chopped it off a little bit, Kevin. Okay, and I add the roux in, I add the milk in stages. So that's way it avoids that I get lumps in there. Okay. And remember when you make the roux, you want to cook it so it's fairly thick sauce consistency because you're adding in some cheese, you're adding in some artichokes, you're adding in some spinach. All of that gives you some more moisture and, and thins, down, thins down your roux. You wanna have just enough consistency when you put the chip in there, that artichoke spinach chip stays on the chip but that doesn't run down like you would have a soup. I have a quick question. Yes. Did you heat your milk before you put it in? Yes, I did. Okay. And the reason is if you don't heat it, you run a chance much more to have lumps in your, in your roux uh, than using warm milk. Thank you. You're welcome. So as you can see, here is my, is my roux. So I'm going to cook it a little bit more. <coughs> Meanwhile, Kevin is, That happens sometimes. Can you wash that, please? Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Chef, can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. What would you use the curry sauce paste for? 
It's going to go when I make the devil deck ah. and I make my curry devil deck. I put that then in my, in my deviled egg base, gives you the curry flavor. And that's just where, how you're making your, your, your deviled egg. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. Sure I already made them. I've got a problem here. Okay. <laughs> what is your problem? Wait, me. Chef, how long will that paste last in the fridge if I want to use it this weekend? Oh, it will last for two weeks. Okay, good. There you go. You actually, you actually can take it and, um, and freeze it, you know? And if you really, I mean, you could take that base also, take a little bit of green, heat it up with some of the base in there, poach some chicken in there, and you have a nice curry chicken too. So it's, it's versatile. You can use it for a lot of different things. Okay. So I need a little bit of salt and pepper in there. It's coming nicely together. That doesn't say. Yeah. So I'm now. This is my. This is now my bechamel. Turn this off. What's he making? I'm putting now in there the artichokes. As you can see, there's a lot of artichokes. I put in there my sambal. Sambal is a chili paste. Uh, again, if you like it spicy, you put more in there. But what I have on the recipe is perfect for um, the right heat. Okay. So we fold it together. The spinach uh, should be done already, right? Side. So okay. I need a, a bigger bowl. All right, so that's maybe the biggest bowl I could find. So I put it in there. Okay. Yeah, okay. Ah, this is what the mixture looks right now. Here's your spinach. That goes in there. Then I have here my cheese. This is my um, feta cheese. Okay. This is my feta cheese. Here's my cream cheese. And I have cut the cream cheese. And I fold it and I fold it all together like this. So as you because the mixture is, is, is a little warm, it will help you to melt some of the cheeses. Okay, now we need a dish to bake it. Where's the dish would we bake it in? I think that's the one here. No, it's the other one. Yeah. Thank you. I'm baking it in a dish. Obviously, I have more than I need. So I put it in here. Here's your dish. Put a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. And we're baking it in the oven. Uh, what, what temperature, Kevin? About 350 degrees. Yeah. Okay, any questions on that? Here's the spinach out to chop that. We're going to cook that right now and get that all done. So, the next thing what we're going to do is now the uh, sausage. And for that one here, you need a bowl, you need a bowl with ice. Um, making forest meat as we're doing here, you want to make sure that all your, all your uh, components stay below 40 degrees. Um, so if you could get me some ice, Kevin, where I can put that in here. Let's see. I, I don't know what he's making. 
I'm making now the Marguerite sausage. So when you go, right? Okay, thanks. You're not. Can you go do your recipe? No. Okay, let me go do your recipe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to do it. You so what we what we have in, in here right now is ground lamb, a pound. Okay. We in fat back. This is the fat back what you have here. Then you have in there ground pork, five ounces. Sugar. Where's your sugar? Thank you. Okay. You have sugar here, two thirds of a tablespoon marjoram. It's a dry marjoram, okay. We have salt, all spice powder, ground black pepper, harissa paste. Where's your harissa paste? That is actually giving you the, uh, the spice this much. Okay, harissa paste, we, need, we only need a teaspoon of that. So, So let me start off with that first. What you have here right now is some crushed ice. And you put in there your, your bowl and get it cold. I put in there the fat back. The ground pork. and the lamb. Okay. I put in there the old spice, the mushroom, the sugar, the salt, the black pepper, and the minced garlic. So it's all in here right now. And then it says a teaspoon. So harissa is a, is a chili paste, it's Moroccan. It's very, it's very spicy, okay? So you wanna be careful how much you put in there. So I put in there about a teaspoon. I mix it in, in there first. And the white wine, what you have, if you actually have a, a robo coop, which I have here, and I think I will use that, it goes much faster. I'll show you a little trick here. In order to keep your moisture to below 40, take about one or two ice cubes and put them in there with your meat. This will actually help you to keep the, 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 the force made in the, right, in the right temperature. And then I take a little bit less of the wine than what the recipe says. I just wanna post it together. I don't want it. Okay, that doesn't work. Can you work on All right, and so, you don't want to have it all finely pureed. You should. It's not on, on there, I see. Okay, so we just want to emulsify the whole, um, the whole forage meat. Then I have mushrooms. I take the stems off the mushrooms. Just wash the mushrooms before you, um, you actually put them in the oven. So here we're having our mushrooms. And so here, here's your force meat. Can I have this here? I'm gonna need to clean up. So one thing is I wanted to show you is, and you can see that here, it sticks together. So when you look at it, it's 40 degrees. If it would now be separating, you would see uh, fat basically oozing out of that. This is all nicely incorporated. And they, that's key of making that because if it separates and you then bake the mushrooms, 
all the fat what you have in there will give you moisture will bake out and you will have a dried out uh, stuffed mushroom. So for that, I need some um, sheet pen. I have that right here. I put a little bit of oil on there. Take the mushrooms. Now, another thing is, I take a spoon. I actually, show an easier way to do that. Take a pastry bag. Put your filling in there. It will be it will be not pliable, so you can get them through a pastry bag. And this recipe will make about for what you have here on force meat, it will make about 30 mushrooms, I would say. Cut off the tip. Take your mushrooms, fill them in like this, and set them on the sheet pan. So this is very straightforward. I will give it to Kevin so he can finish it off and then puts it in the oven. And um, put a little salt on there and you're ready to go. Here, Kevin. Thank you. Any questions on that? So it's, um, you're putting it in a 350 degree oven. It will take about, I would say anywhere, depending on your oven, anywhere from about 10 to 12 minutes to be baked. When it comes out, just put a little bit of chives on there and you're perfect. All right, we're moving right along. Any questions so far? So the next thing we're going to do is the crab cake, right? So crab cake we have right here. I need some of the small sheet pans, please, yeah? So when you go to your recipe, crab cakes, okay. We have eight ounces of jumbo lump crab meat. We have some finely, um, so the crab meat is right here. Chopped onions, we have right here. A celery. Finely chopped, we have right here. Parsley, we have right here. Mayonnaise is right here. Then we have egg whites. We have two eggs here. We're having the Melba toast, seafood magic, Worcestershire, and then salt. Okay. So Melba toast is Melba bread, actually thin sliced bread. You just put a little bit of butter on there bake it in the oven and you, you can take it in a Ziploc bag, take a pan, just crush it slightly so it's still coarse. So it looks like this, everybody can see that? Okay. So let's start off with our, um, can you give me some cloths with uh, crab cakes, uh, crab, chumble on crab meat, what we have right here. I'm adding also in there, my celery. I'm adding in there my onions. I'm adding in there my parsley. In a separate bowl, thank you very much. In a separate bowl, I'm putting now the egg whites. So we're breaking those eggs. How many eggs do we need? Two egg whites. Okay. We have half a pound of, um, of uh, crab meat. Okay. That's my egg whites. We keep the egg yolks, we keep them for your recipe later on. Then I put in there the mayonnaise. I put in there my Worcestershire sauce. You got the rest. 
and I put the Cajun seasoning in there and whisk the whole thing up. So now I have a question for you. Why I'm doing that? Why I'm not just throwing everything in one bowl and mix it all together? Can anybody tell me? All right, the reason is I want to keep the, the crab meat as lumpy and as large as possible. If you keep it all and put it all together, what you end up with, you're breaking the crab meat and it loses all the, the, the nice textures of the chamberlain crab, what you have. So, now I'm taking that, putting that one into the crab. Lightly fold it. Okay, as you can see, it almost looks like now you're having a crab, a crab salad. Now I'm putting, sorry. And, and when you, in the separate bowl with the mayonnaise, egg whites, seafood magic, and the- What it, looks, you? It, it looks weird in the beginning, doesn't it? it? It does, but it comes all together. Okay, thank and you. Now you put the bread from, uh, the, the, the milk in there. And as you can see, it's setting up. So I suggest take this mixture now and let it rest for about 15 minutes, okay? So what we will do is we cover that and we come then back and we're going to have a pastry rings where we're going to mold it, put it on a uh, uh, oil uh, sheet pan and bake it in the oven. Okay. Moving right along. The next one is the chicken skewers. All right. Kevin gets a workout today. Thank you very much. So, um, like I said already, the idea comes from um, um, our chicken piccata. I'm using a six ounce uh, chicken breast. Uh, you can also use chicken tenders. It's completely up to you. And uh, with that, we're serving a lemon butter sauce. And again, the lemon butter sauce is very versatile. Now, I wanna give you a little, a little uh, insight. If you don't wanna use the chicken, you also can use like fish, take a halibut, um, instead of the, of the chicken, operated the same way as the bigata, so with the lemon butter sauce, it's a wonderful dish too. We have the chicken breast, and I'm going to cut that into thin slices. You wanna cut it in slices like this, because by doing that, I don't have to pound the chicken that much. Okay, Kevin can then do the rest. Um, if you don't have a meat mallet, that's fine. Just take the back of your, of your knife and pound it slightly down, okay? You have a pan already for the sauteing them? Okay, so. I season them with salt and pepper on both sides. And you know, another thing is if you have a party, you can cook them ahead, put them on skewers, party comes in, pop them in the oven for about three, four minutes, heat them up and they're perfectly okay. I skewer the chicken now, you wanna go straight on like this. Okay. Here's some uh, tomato paste. You don't, you don't wanna, you don't wanna put it any bigger than that because it has to be one bite size. Uh, so it's easy for, for your guests to eat it. And, um, and what I have then here is, um, some flour, can you take the plastic off please? Uh, just regular all-purpose flour. 
And then we're having, um, I said some egg wash. It's basically your eggs, which you scramble and put a little bit of, um, of water in there. And then Parmesan cheese, finely grated Parmesan cheese. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the, 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 um, the chicken in the flour, shake off the excess and tip them in the, uh, in the egg wash. So like this, and you want to make sure you get on the bottom. So you get all the cheese, what you have on there, on there. Yeah. And then you have a nonstick pan where you're going to saute them out. And Kevin is going to do that while I'm going to make the lemon butter sauce. Any questions on that? There you go. Can I ask a question about the crab cakes? Go ahead. How big do you make them and how do you cook them? What temperature and how long? The size of the crab cakes is entirely up to you. What I have here, I have here, I would say about a one and a half inch pastry cutter ring. Okay. You can make them smaller. I mean, if I put them, we serve them sometimes here on a spoon, you know, when you have butler style of dough, you serve them a spoon. You want to make them only one inch. Okay. Here on the buffet where people have themselves, I maybe make them a little bit bigger. On the, uh, on the chicken piccata, you said you put Parmesan cheese into the egg wash? Correct. All right. Yes. Um, and then, Chef, uh, 350 for how long? What's the temperature for the crab cakes? The crab cakes will be done in about 350 in about 8 to 10 minutes. Thank you. Uh, but again, uh, let me say it depends on the size. The one size what I make here, about eight to 10 minutes. Uh, the other, if you're making it smaller, less. If you're making it bigger, maybe it takes a little bit longer. All right. So, lemon butter sauce. The first thing what you're going to do is you're going to make the base. So I take two lemons. Uh, sorry. Let's do the, the, the white wine first. Two lemons, squeeze them in there. So I take about half of the lemons with a squeeze in there, cut them in half again, and put them in there. The rest of it you discharge. Then I have some herbs. I have here some thyme, some rosemary, some basil, put it all in there. And I'm reducing that now before I add the green. Where is the green? The green is right here. It's a very, it's a very simple sauce. So you can actually use um, limes too if you want to make a lime butter sauce. Um, so we're going to do that here. So basically what you want to do is you want to reduce that liquid almost by about 80%. Okay. So that becomes your flavor base for your um, lemon butter sauce. Then we're going to add the cream, what we have here and reducing that to almost like thick sauce consistency. And then I'm sorry, I forgot something to put in there and that's the shallots. We also need the shallots in there. Um, and then you take it off the stove and you work in your cubes butter, okay? Now the key is that you, if you're going to boil it, while you put the butter in there, it will split, okay? You wanna get an emulsification and you get that where the cream actually gives you the base to hold the butter together. And we're going to put that together right here. Okay, moving like I wrong, four or five. The next thing is the brie cheese. Okay, so here, look here. Kevin just sauteed them off. You can see the lollipops here. So we have them made ahead. Okay, so I will pop them in the oven just before we put everything together. Chef, is, if there's that much butter in that sauce, I'm really not choosing the healthy chicken option. <laughs> the 
No, no, I, I think what you have here, I will use half of the butter. That's just about <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. It's... That's two pounds what you have here. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? This is cooking. Next thing we do is turn this over. I have here a pastry which you can buy in the store. And I have that on a parchment, on a, on a parchment paper. All right, and then I have a, a, a rolling pin and I just want to roll it up slightly. Use some of the flour here. And then I need a fork. Okay. You don't want to, you don't want to go too thin because otherwise it doesn't, it doesn't puff up, puff up on you. Okay. You want to make sure you take a little bit, make a few holes in the back pastry. It helps them to rise evenly. I then have three cheese. Regular brie, what you buy in the store. And I'm going to put it right in the center and have it maybe about, I would say three inches off the outside. Cut it in a round circle. Don't get rid of the other pieces because we need those. This is cooking nicely now. All right, so we're going to put on there some apricot jam. I would be done in Texas. I would use jalapeno jam, which goes very, very well with it too. Don't be shy. Put enough on that on that apricot jam on there. You have an egg wash too, right? Thank you. Um, then a little bit of brown sugar. Then some almonds. Okay, then I'm going to brush that whole thing with egg wash. And folding it together like a bag of spurs. Okay, can you see that? Beautiful. You want to keep the, the outside open, okay? Then I'm just taking my knife and make a few leaves. And I cut them in pieces like this. With the back of the knife, make a few incisions like you have regular leaves. All right, and then I need my egg wash and my, um, okay. If you have puff pastry left over, keep it because it's, it's, you can use it for a lot of different things. So, egg wash the whole thing. Egg wash also the leaves, what you just did. And then put them on there as a garnish. On your, on your cheese. Is that egg whites or full, full egg? Full egg, egg wash, yes. So then Kevin is going to take that and he's going to bake it in the oven. And we're going to put it again. So you put puff paste in a 400 degree oven, turn it down to 375, mm -hmm. okay? Because if it's too low, what you're going to end up with is that the butter melts out of your dough and then your, your puff pastry doesn't rise. Okay, moving right along. Uh, five, six, what is this? How, how I did your cup you another. Sorry? How long, how long do you it's going to take? It will take you in the oven, I would say about 15 minutes, maybe even 20, depending. I mean, 
if you have a convection oven at home, it will cook faster. If you have a regular baking oven at home, it will take longer. So we're almost there then here with the, um, with the butter. So I always find, you know, when you do a party at home, you have to cater to a lot of different people, you know? And most of the time, the people, um, you know, unless, you know, friends, family, you know, of the vegan, vegetarians or whatever, but I always thought it's always a good option to have, to have something what vegans or vegetarians eat. So that's why we're having the uh, artichoke caponata. Okay. So what we're having here, this is the sun-dried tomatoes here, or is it the smoked tomatoes? Okay, so that's the tomatoes. So here is basically, I'm gonna watch my sauce. You're almost there. Here is my artichokes as I had them. I had them cut, a little salt, and just fry them. Okay, very, very, very simple. What I wanna do now is, as you can see, the sauce is almost reduced here. I wanna add now my green and reduce that now to sauce consistency. Okay. All right. So. Chef. Yes. I have one quick question. I didn't see the recipe for the um, chicken skewers when they came through. When you resend all the recipes, will you make sure that one's in there? Oh, definitely. Okay, thanks. Definitely. So what we have here, we have the artichokes. Let me get my recipe so I'm telling you exactly as it is. So artichoke caponata, what you have? You have olive oil, what we have here. We have chopped garlic, what we have here. We have red onions, which we have here. We have diced tomatoes, we have here. Eggplants, we have here. Roasted artichokes, we have right here. We have Kalamata olives right here. We got uh, golden raisins here, granulated sugar, uh, white balsamic vinegar, uh, almond slivers, salt and pepper, capers, and parsley. Okay? That's just all what is your caponata. Hold on a second. Is it done? No, I'm going to reduce it over okay. here. So Kevin is reducing it, and when he's done reducing the sauce, he will give it to me, and then I will um, finish it off with the butter. We add up here. Okay. We need some more fuel. Okay. Here we go. So we add our olive oil in there. Red onions, and the same. Really, when you look at it cooking, it's actually very simple because somewhat it's always the same method. You turn, you, you saute the onions, then you add the uh, the garlic. Okay, a little bit more olive oil. Okay, so this is, again, until it runs loosened. On this particular recipe, we're basically cooking everything, put it together with the exception of the artichokes, uh, uh, of the eggplants, which I will put in there a lot. And the reason is, if you put the eggplants in there in, in the beginning and mix it all together, it becomes a big mush. Okay, and you want to keep the integrity of the eggplant so when you eat it, it doesn't become all like a, like a puree. Can you uh, limit it up, please? Yeah. Okay, now the uh, translucent. We put now the, um, the garlic in there. And again, you don't want to burn the garlic. I know there are dishes where you brown the garlic olive oil over, over fish or whatever, but this is not the dish. Um, 
Um, and again, you got to be careful when you do that, not to get it too dark because if you burn it, it becomes all, all bitter. So we have this. Now we're adding in there the tomatoes. And, and we cook that. Some artichokes. Kalamata olives. Raisins, golden raisins. Almond slivers toasted. Sugar. And the vinegar. And the capers. So the only thing is I haven't put in there yet is the um, parsley and the um, and the eggplant. Very simple dish. You can change the Kalamata olives to green olives. Um, I mean, you have a lot of different options here. You actually can even take apples and dice them in there, and it gives you a nice different flavor. You can change the balsamic vinegar, the sherry vinegar. So this is just a nice little uh, uh, caponata. You wanna eat at room temperature. You don't wanna take it out from the refrigerator and serve it. And if you are, let's say, in a time crunch, you're not getting it the right temperature, then just pop it in the microwave a little bit and just give it a little uh, room temperature because it eats much better and the flavors are developing so much more than having something right out of the refrigerator. How are we doing here? Okay. okay. So what we're doing here right now, okay, we have taken it, go ahead. We have taken it off the sauce and now we're working in the butter. That's your lemon butter sauce. And you do that away from the stove so you not separate the butter. And the butter has to be cold, yeah? Not room temperature butter because otherwise I think that should be it. So this is done. The only thing is what we're going to do now is we're straining it and then check the seasoning for salt and pepper and you're ready to go. Kevin is going to do that. I'm going to, um, this is coming nicely along, okay? Okay. Any questions as well? How many of you will watch the video again when you're going to cook it? Uh, maybe, I know I'm going a little bit fast, but that's why we're taping everything and we're going to put, the, um, we're going to put it on the, on, on, on the, on the uh, website. So the next one is, it's one of my favorites and it's candied, candied bacon. Um, You do want to cook the caponata, I would say for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, okay? For all the flavors to develop. So in case it gets a little bit too dry, what we're going to do, just add some of the wine you're drinking while you're cooking, all right? So where's the wine you're drinking, Kevin? He's hiding the bottle, so thank you, Kevin. All right, so I put a little bit more wine in there. And perfect, then we're going to cook this. So, the lemon butter sauce, while he has it on right now, we're done with that and you're not using it right away, put it in your kitchen in a warm place. Not hot place, warm place, because you do not want to have it separating. Yeah, a little salt. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so we're moving right along. Where's my bacon? Where's my bacon? Okay. Here's my bacon. So what we have done already in order to help us to speed up the whole cooking process a little bit, you take the bacon, reheat the oven at 350 degrees, 
place the strips on there and you pre-cook it. And you pre-cook it until they almost run like this. They're almost a little bit crispy already, but that's basically a rendering of the fat, okay? I have some special bacon here at the club. It's a thick slice bacon. So that slice actually 12 slices to a pound, which I think it's, it's nice. And so that's the bacon, what you can get here, but you can get also bacon from the store, whatever, whatever you like and, um, and use that. So here we're doing two things. So we have some sherry vinegar and then we're having some sugar and I need a pan here. A larger pan so I can put it in there. Thank you very much. And you're going to do that a couple of times. So you take your, your bacon and you put the, um, the vinegar on your, on your bacon. And that's really because it's, um, the bacon is, is rich and you have also the sugar in there. The vinegar helps it somewhat to, um, to dye it all together. It's the acidity. It's almost like the umani what you get, you know, uh, uh, sweet, sour, salty, and, and that's really what you're ending up here. And you're, you're basically breading them on both sides with the sugar. Chef, when you cook that bacon, did you do that on a rack in the oven or did yes. you do it in a pan? I do it in the rack because you want to- In the oven. Isn't that a better yeah. way to make bacon? Uh, yeah, well, it, it makes it not as greasy. You get all your grease out. Yep. Um, but then again, <laughs> and again, if I make breakfast and I make a potato, like a country potatoes or whatever, I would take the bacon, cook it in the pan, take then that grease, put my potatoes in there, my peppers and my onions or whatever, and have a great breakfast, uh, breakfast potato. So it's... Um, it depends on what you're using it for. So here you can see, this is your bacon. So we're going to put it now back in the oven. Kevin is going to do that. And we're going to caramelize that, that bacon. So when it comes out from the oven, you will notice that it's maybe not necessary all crispy. Well, the reason is because sugar, when it gets hot, it's very pliable. But sugar, when it gets cold, becomes like, candy caramelized and that's the same thing what we're going to do with that uh, bacon all right caponata is coming right along so it's time for our artichokes i need a bigger bowl so i can mix it together i put the parsley in there and then i put in there the uh, artichokes and as you know most probably know I'm not even cooking the artichokes, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, eggplants, not artichokes, the eggplants anymore. I just fold it right in there, mix the whole thing up, and voila, here you go. And as you can see, my eggplants stay together, so that whole thing is not mush. So when you have a, a spoon, you put it on the toast, and we're actually having some uh, grilled ciabatta bread on, on here, where that goes wonderful with it. Okay, so here's our, um, okay, spoon would help, but I'm a chef, so I can make it without a spoon. So this is a wonderful dish, room temperature, or you can also have it hot. Or, you know, like we said before with the picada, you can use fish. Maybe not serve the lemon butter sauce like some of you think it's too rich. Serve it with the uh, caponata. There you go. All right. Bacon is cooking and we're moving right along to the, what is the next thing? Deviled eggs. Deviled eggs, there we go. Any questions so far? You're a very quiet audience. 
you either taking it all in or I lost you already half an hour ago. But never worry, you go back to the video and you're going to watch it. Here's our base, what we did earlier, the curry base. Okay. I had to make already the cell, but anyway, where's the X? So. Here we go. Take a little bit of parchment paper. I just put it on my cutting board because it makes it a little bit easier and cleaner to work with your eggs. There's no right or wrong. You can cut the eggs like this. You can cut the eggs like that. I like it the long way. It looks better. Key is, that you cut the edge on the bottom. So basically you cut both sides. Can you see that up here? The reason is so they stand up. Oh, that's a great trick. And then you cut them in half. Take your, okay. so it stands up straight. Take your egg uh, yolk and put them in the bowl. Ask him how he boils his eggs. Chef, so I thought I was boiling the egg a great way today. And when I went to peel them, the peel wouldn't come off. Does that mean it's an old egg or too new an egg? As you cook the eggs, did you shock them right away in ice water? Yes, I ran them under ice water. You ran them under, no, you ran them under tap water. You didn't put them in ice water. Right. Oh. <laughs> so what you need to do is have some water, put ice cubes in there and then dump your eggs right in there, make sure there's enough water so the chill down right away. Tap water not necessary, does it? If they still don't feel, yes, then you had all that. Okay, so while we're doing that, cutting them in half, and they, uh, you can actually keep the egg white, what you cut off, and I'll show you then you can use that as the garnish for the curried egg. It's just chopping the whole thing and getting it all, all on top and making it look pretty, festive. It's Christmas, right? Um, you want to continue with this here? Just cut them in half. All right, so what we're going to do is we're making the base and I'm putting that in the Robocoop, the egg, egg yolks, the cooked egg yolks. Then I have some butter. Okay, so do some butter. For how many eggs we have here, a dozen? Yeah, a dozen eggs. So I most probably put about two tablespoons of butter in there. Okay. I'm putting the uh, Dijon mustard, about a half a tablespoon for this much. And then um, I need to get them all in there. I'm not putting the mayonnaise in there yet because I wanna make sure that I have a more firmer consistency so when I'm putting the, the curry base in there or the uh, pimentos, my whole stuffing doesn't get too thin. Okay. One more. A few more and we're there. Yeah, give me all of them, yeah. I uh, will need them. Thank you. Okay. Okay, here's our bacon. Perfectly. Can you see those glistening? So we let them cool down a little bit. Great. 
So I'm making uh, the, the stuffing. Okay. Yep, almost. No. This thing doesn't want to cooperate, huh? All right. You don't want to? Too bad. All right. So I show you something. So you can see what the texture is of my egg stuffing. So as you can see, it's relatively, it's almost like a play dough. Okay, that's consistency. All right. So I want to get first my curry in there. Mix it up. So I have no salt, no pepper, nothing in there yet. Okay. I take a little spoon. I'm tasting it to see. It's a little bit more curry, a little salt, a little pepper, and a little bit of mayonnaise. I would say about this should be enough. Yeah, this is exactly, this is exactly the texture what I want. Now I take my, I take my, um, this is good. my pastry bag. Now there's no right or wrong. You can use star tip. You can use plain tip. I'm using a star, a star tip, I think, yeah. All right. So as I did the, um, the curry paste in here, you would do the same thing with the pimentos, okay? So just regular pimentos, or you have um, Spanish piquillo peppers, which are very good because they're nicely roasted, which we have here. Instead of the curry, would, you would put that in there and you get not pimento um, deviled egg. And then I need the, um... okay, so take them. And just pipe them in there. Meanwhile, I'm doing that. Uh, Michael, get me some uh, smoked paprika powder. Oh, you got it? So, um, what goes also wonderful with the curry is um, some of the bacon, what we did here. So I'll show you that. All right. Smoke paprika powder a little bit on there. Do we have some chives? 
Huh? Drive this right here. Wonderful. Some trials on top. And if you want, you can take some of the bacon, break it all up, and put some of them on there too. And here is your um, curry deviled eggs. Any questions? All right, so we have crop meat. We're doing the next ones with crop meat. So meanwhile, um, let me clean it up here quickly. Okay, so I'm taking this, this one here. So here I'm going to set the eggs already on the bowl. We're making a crop meat salad. And you know, it's always good. It's always good when you do two, two different kinds of eggs, you know, or you can make it, you can start with ham salad. And the reason is, as you most probably have seen, we did 12 eggs, but it takes the egg yolk from 12 eggs to do and stuff six eggs, okay? So you almost need to double the egg yolk if you want to do all of them uh, deviled eggs, yeah? So, uh, we have a bowl here. We have crab meat. There's the crab meat and everything. And we're going to get that done. Thank you very much. Mayonnaise. Take the crab meat a little bit, break it apart because you need to get it into the eggs. I have some um, celery and some tarragon. I'm putting some tarragon in there. I think tarragon goes wonderful with crab meat. And then put a little bit of um, mayonnaise in there. Mix the whole thing up. We have some lemon juice. Yes, yes. thank you very much. A little bit of lemon juice. And, and there you go. Very simple. We're going to fill those eggs. Okay, Kevin can do that while I'm, and then we put a little bit of uh, more terracon on top of it as a garnish. Any questions on the uh, deviled egg? Chef, I love the idea of mixing traditional with the crab cakes, that, or the crab, that's a great idea. Well, otherwise it, it takes you too many eggs, you know, because you almost need to double eggs in order to fill them. You know, it's not, you don't have enough egg yolks to fill 12 eggs, 24 halves, with the egg yolk what you get. So it's always a good way. But you can take also ham. You can take ham, put them in there, a little bit of uh, uh, um, cream cheese, a little bit of Tabasco, be ready, whole thing up and fill your eggs. And it's perfectly okay. I think we got one more item to go, and that's the salmon. Would you ever put uh, some kind of a salmon mixture in deviled eggs? Oh yeah, you can take smoked salmon, cream cheese, mix it all up, bingo, there you go. So I need a plastic wrap on here. So I don't want to toot my own horn, but I tell you one thing, the best salmon you can eat and get is here at the Philadelphia Country Club. We're making our own smoked salmon. I tried them all because I love smoked salmon. This one here is second to none. So we have it on the marketplace. If you want smoked salmon, this is the way to go. So here we need some plastic wrap. And Kevin is getting that right now. Or Saran wrap, what you're calling it. The key is you need a stainless steel surface. It's not going to sit on a, um, on a wooden cutting board. Now, if you have like um, Corian or you have granite or whatever marble, that works too, but it does not work on a, on a wooden cutting board. Then I have my um, cream cheese. Huh? Oh yeah, no cream cheese is here. So I took cream cheese 
and I whipped the green cheese and I kept it at room temperature. And I just want to go about how much salmon I have. And that is about it. Then I have a little spatula. And I spread the whole thing up. It's almost like making a cake, huh? All right. Offset spatula works very well. Okay, so that is about it. Onions, red onions, Kevin will slice in the meantime the cucumber cup and what we're doing with that, we cut them all about a third of an inch. And then you have a, bowl, a, a plate here, like this one here. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Well, use this one here, that's just fine. And it just set them on there. Capers, we have chopped capers. If you like capers a lot, put some more capers on there. Then I have some um, egg whites, uh, egg yolks. This is egg yolks. I have some cornichos. I would not take uh, sweet pickles. Uh, I don't think they don't go very well. And then I have some egg whites. All right, and uh, where's the chives? And some chives. All right, now we take the salmon and we lay the salmon right in there. I just want right. to see what you're doing that. Kevin's doing a heck of a job. Yeah, I know. He's, uh, he's doing a great job. I'm going to add a clone of Kevin to my uh, Christmas list for Santa. Okay. He's available. <laughs> so here we go. I have a little bit too much cream cheese, so I take it off. All right. Now I take a little bit more on the plastic wrap and I put it on top. And the reason is because I want to. I want to press it so everything is more or less the same. Okay, make sure you um, spread this out. And then, take it, wrap this around. Now come on. And flip the whole thing out over. So the sheet, what you have now underneath. You want to make sure that's on the bottom. Now you're going to get that and you roll it up like a, a, a jelly roll. Okay, now what you're doing here is I keep the plastic on, okay? Do you have a, um, well, I have one here, Kevin. Okay, I keep the plastic on, but I don't eat it. So the reason is why I keep the plastic on, let me clean up something so you can see that, is it cuts better. So as you can see, it pulls otherwise. And another thing what helps is when you have, I set it a little bit in the, in, the, in the freezer, and then you pull the plastic off like this and set it right on top. Okay, so.
you can make it as much filling in there or a little filling in there as you want. It's completely up to you. Here we have a lot of filling in there. So Kevin is right now portioning the grab cakes. Can you see that? Kevin, come over here. Don't be shy, they like to see you, Kevin. And um, he's going to bake them. And as you can see, I always clean my, my knife after each time I cut it. So you have a clean, uh, you have a clean cut because otherwise it becomes all smeared. So chef, I'm completely focused on you, but I can't help watch Kevin. What, what Kevin, what little technique are you using there? Is that a, is that an ice cream scooper? It's an ice cream scooper and a carrot. So he uses the ice cream scooper to portion it, and he uses the, ice, the, the carrot to, to compact the uh, crab cake into the, into the mold so you have nicely firm and even crab cakes. Yeah, I didn't do that. Okay, one more. Here we go. And then we garnish the whole thing off with um, a little bit of dill. Okay, I have some dill here. And all of that is very easy to make. You can make them in advance. So when your party comes, take it out about, about 30 minutes before they all arrive. Because you really don't want anything completely tasting like cold like the refrigerator. I'm sorry. And here is your salmon. Can you see? Those look incredible. So. Then we're arranging that a little bit. We're putting this here, the salmon. All right. So we take this all away here. So now the question comes up, how are you going to serve that bacon, right? So for those of you who have an engineering degree that that's for you, and I'm just joking. Okay, um, you can take a piece of wood like you have here, some poles, I have some chicken, uh, some, uh, some butcher twine here, wrap that whole thing with a little bit of ribbon and there you go. So now I went to Michael's, everybody knows the Michael's store and I got those little uh, clips, clothes clips. And now we're going to take those and we're going to hang our bacon. So it makes it easy for members of your guests to eat. On the bottom, I put a little bit of a crudite. I have some green olives, some black olives, some uh, balsamic cipollini onions. Now, you don't necessarily have to do that just with the bacon. You can take salami, you can take Spanish chorizo, take your clothes clips and do that. And it definitely will become a conversation piece on your party. So, <laughs> let, oops, and you see it actually holds, those clothes clips hold. <clears throat> can you put this there? Thank you. So, now we're going to, um, Put that uh, video over here. Hey, chef, by, chef, by the way, we just made the candied bacon. 
and yeah. it is fantastic so and good. addictive. <laughs> yeah. So you want to come and continue here? So here's your buffet. If you dress it up a little bit, one thing is what you want to make sure is when you have it, that you have some height to your buffet, a little decoration, <clears throat> your candies, your devil deck, grab me deck, soft salmon, your caponata, your artichoke dip, you know, it's nicely, you know, you can see how it sits, it's wonderful. Your chicken piccata, I can tell you the kids will love it, okay? Uh, your brie cheese with a little bit of fruit, some crackers, caramelized pecans, which you can on the marketplace. If you want, you can add some cold cuts, some charcuterie. There you go, very easy. Have a happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Have fun cooking. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Email me, call me, and have fun while creating that feed. Thank, Thank you, you very much. That for was being here very tonight. fun. Thank you. Enjoy. It. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Beautiful. Kevin nice. says hi too. <laughs> Thank right. you, Thanks, Kevin. Kevin. Thank All right. You. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Wow. And the recipes will be on the website. Uh, I think he's sending them out again.